Welcome to the Elder Law Hour with Emily Hicks. I am Emily Hicks with Emily Hicks Law, and I am so happy that you're here with us today because we're going to have a great episode for you. We are going to talk all about insurance with Edie Williams, who is a state farm insurance agent, and she's going to provide us with a lot of wonderful information about how to create a comprehensive plan for you and your family. We're talking all about protection, all about peace of mind and getting everything in place so that you can have a good night's sleep. So before I get to that, I want to first start talking about a couple of items that are in the news. And one of those is the cost of Medicare premiums that are going to change again in 2024. Medicare Part B costs are projected to get more expensive while Medicare Part D prices are expected to decrease. Each year, the Social Security Administration determines what the cost associated with the Medicare program will be, and it either raises or lowers premiums and deductibles using the rules set out in the Social Security Act. So it looks like Medicare Part B is likely increasing in 2024, And that is due to a new Alzheimer's treatment coming to the market. And that drug is called Laquimbi, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. But it is a drug called Laquimbi that is a treatment for people who are in the early stages of Alzheimer's. And Medicare beneficiaries are expected to pick up the cost of that hitting the market. Therefore, the Medicare Part B prices are expected to increase in 2024, and the costs are projected to go up from the current $164.90 per month to $174.80 per month. So that's nearly a $10 increase per month. So there may not be a huge difference in the Medicare Part D costs, but those costs could actually go down a little bit in 2024. They're currently at about $56.49 in 2023, and that's expected to possibly go down to $55.50 in 2024. So that's not a a huge decrease, but a little bit of savings perhaps. And just as a reminder, um, Medicare Part B is going to cover your physician services, outpatient hospital services, certain home health services, medical equipment and other health services not covered by Part A, which is your hospital, skilled nursing, and hospice um, coverage. And of course, Medicare Part D is covering your prescription drug costs. Okay, the next item is Social Security. So the Social Security recipients could see an increase in their benefits next year, and it's looking like the cost of living adjustment is going to be around 3.2% and for 2024, and that's according to the Senior Citizens League. Um, and Mary Johnson, who is the Social Security and Medicare Policy Analyst with the League, says the increase is based on inflation data from July, August, and September. So what they do is they take the rate of inflation in each of those months and average that together and then compare it to the rate of inflation during the third quarter of the previous year. Johnson said, even even with the increase, which is projected to look like about $57 for the average recipient, it doesn't look like it's going to make, you know, a huge maybe a huge difference in in most people's lives. I mean, compare it to the 2023 increase where we were looking at an 8.7% cost of living adjustment. Uh, For 2023, it actually went up quite a bit. And then in 2022, just as a reminder, it went up 5.9%. So they're predicting that it's only going to go up 3.2% for 2024. Now, we're still waiting on the inflation data from September. So they're not making an official announcement on that until October. So we will keep you up to date on that and any other changes in Social Security and Medicare that that come up. And hopefully we'll be able to talk about that when the data comes in and everything is finalized for 2024. But until then, let's get started with talking to Edie Williams. She is a State Farm agent. And we're going to talk to her today about insurance and all of the ups and downs and the 
ways that you need to get yourself covered. My guest today is Ms. Edie Williams, who is a state farm agent and an insurance extraordinaire. And I'm so happy that you're here with me, Edie. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate the invitation. I look forward to chatting today. So you are an insurance agent and you do a lot of different types of coverage, correct? Um, what brought you into the industry to begin with? I really love that question because um, no one ever that I've ever met ever says when they wake up, hey, I, when I grow up, I want to be an insurance agent, <laughs> you know, unless they have a family <laughs> member in it right. or a mentor or something like that. But my path into the industry was uh, during college, I worked for a actually family owned advertising agency, not my family, but a small business. Okay. And I learned, I was studying medicine. I wasn't sure what part of medicine I was going to go into, but biology and chemistry, those were my love languages. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, but I really needed to have an income while I was in college and I wanted to get experience. And I got hired by a speech professor who owned an advertising agency. So I worked for him and every day he'd go, you belong in business, you belong in business. And I was doing sales and marketing and, and, and everything. And so after about a year of that, I finally went, you know, I really like this, but I really like to help people. So right. I knew I needed to do something. Yeah. Something in business where I help people. And so I'm clicking away and I decided to go straight through and get my master's in business administration. So I have a um, bachelor's degree and a master's. And at that point, there was a professor that I worked a lot with and um, he did a lot of consulting with State Farm Insurance, which corporate headquarters is in Illinois. And that's where I went to college and, and where I grew up. Oh, and he okay. said, I'm taking a group of undergrads on a tour. Would you like, you know, be interested in going to see this, this corporation? I'm like, sure. I just thought I was going on a little tour and long story short, he actually had some, some people that were interested in talking to me. So I interviewed with them at the corporate level Oh, okay. and state farm is a large insurance company. One, I think the largest in the United States. And so I went in and I still didn't do anything in insurance. So I did core business in the background, contract negotiation, financial analysis, purchasing was the area I was in. And then I got sent on a temporary basis from Illinois after I'd been there a while to Florida to open a 24 hour call center for state farm. Oh. And I got to Jacksonville, Florida. And I looked around and I said, I love this community. I love the state. It's a great place to own a business, a great yes. place to yeah raise a family. When I relocated, I had three children. And so at that point, I was able to actually open an agency. I, I got into that part of the business and was uh, luckily selected to open an agency for State Farm and also be a business owner in the community. Um, right. So I had three kids at that time. Yeah, three kids at that time. Yeah, And busy, that busy. was, yeah, it's very busy. That was um, 35 years ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I've been in the business a long time. So I was 15 years with corporate, learning about the background of the, of the industry. Then 19 years ago, I opened my own agency and have been in business here ever since as, a, as an agent, state farm agent, and uh, had a few more kids. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you said, tell a little about yourself, I now have five children. And it is wonderful. And the, and the fun part about it is they're all mine and their age, meaning I gave, I, I'm the mother to all of them, give birth to all in their ages is 30 to 10 years old. Oh, wow. So yeah. what I like about that, other than just being a mom and a wife, which is, is wonderful is I do have some really diverse experience in both ages of children and family and planning and the, yes, all the things that go with that, as well as the different stages of, of business owning and working with, with customers too. Well, and I think that's so important because, you know, like myself, I have three kids and they're young. I had them a little bit later, I guess, in life than maybe some people, but the ages are eight to 12 right now. So I have three girls and I'm in that stage where they, there's a lot going on. I'm part of that sandwich, you know, generation that also is looking at elderly parents and taking care of, you know, what's going on with parents that are older and parents. Well, unfortunately my mother passed last year, but there was months of caretaking and, and doing all of those things. So, you know, you really, um, a lot of my clients are just like me and in, in the age of having to protect young children. And they're looking at what they need to do to get their lives together, basically, and, and what their estate plan needs to look like. And we look at the big picture of what types of insurance and whether or not they are properly insured. Because when you have young children, 
life insurance is a big deal. You know, that's something that comes into play usually after someone has a child, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. when a lot of people think about it at least, or maybe after they get married. But then on the um, flip side of that, as they get older, needs change throughout the different life stages. So I think it's important to to understand the different stages of your client's journey. And it's always enriching and fulfilling to talk to people and plan with people that are in different stages of life. So it sounds like you understand really, you know, what that's all about. So, yeah. And if I haven't been through it, maybe one of my customers or most likely one of my customers has. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen a lot of a, a lot of things and have a lot of interesting stories, but what do you see most often when someone comes to you? It's a great question. I think that most people have a very limited understanding of insurance. Yes. And it's something that is such a huge part of your budget, huge it part is. of your budget. It's a huge <laughs> and so you part think, of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you think anything else that you spend a lot on from your budget, you usually know a lot about. Right. Or you have a real pa- or you have a real passion for, right? Whether sure. it's kids or the the home or where you in, you know put your money, vacations, whatever you do with it, hobbies, you usually have a passion for it, you know a lot about it. And insurance, generally speaking, people seem to feel I pay a lot of money for something that I hope I never use. Yes. And so that's the that's the attitude or the the frame frame of mind that they're in. And that makes sense to me. And so we try really hard to help put our arms around not telling people what they need, but understanding the risks and kind of the risks of everyday life. Some of those things you just mentioned, whether it's driving or home or I'm trying to protect myself and what I provide to the family. We always really start off with what's important to you, what's important to you and what's going on in your world. And if someone says, well, I'm getting ready to buy a house or I'm getting married. And I just kind of run through the life events, if you will, getting married, graduating from school, going out on your own, getting divorced, mm-hmm. a death in the family. Maybe I, I was married and now my spouse of 30 years, 50 years has passed away and I'm now newly single, if you will. Mm-hmm. Going through all those changes, having a baby, having another baby, having another baby, <laughs> three girls. <laughs> going through those changes and what those things mean. And the reason I'm so passionate about approaching it from what's going on in your world is uh, because it's what's important to them that matters, not what's important to me. And yeah, and I had a lot of experience and education on the, the corporate side of State Farm 15 years before I ever became an agent. And I was actually working in the industry and never had anybody ask me those questions myself. Mm -hmm. And I look, I, once I started learning, I was like, why didn't anybody tell me that? Had I known this, I would have been able to use this tool or this strategy. And so that's where I got just really passionate about trying to help people with insurance. Because again, going back to my career and how I got started, I wanted to do something where I help people. Yeah. And, and that was very important to me. And so I took the skill set that I've learned and, and I try to apply that. So just saying, if I was talking to you, Emily, and we were just meeting and let's just say we're standing in a line at you know, a coffee shop and you've got one of your daughters with you. And we just start talking about hobbies. What's important to you. Let's talk Mm -hmm. about that. And then we can go from there. Yeah. Then we can go from there. And then how can we take the budget piece and from a strategy standpoint, then meet your goals, but really maximize your strategy and your budget. So there could be things like when we can get more into that later, but things like discounts or deductible options that really fit your need that you didn't even know were out there. You didn't right. even have a clue. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even have a clue. So that's really what we try to do. We try to strategize and, and we may not always be the hundred percent solution either. If we can't do something, maybe we know someone who can, but how can we work together to help that person take care of what's going on in their world and maximize that budget, maximize it. Make I it love it. I love that approach because it's so customer or client focused and it's really, I mean, you're the resource, right? You're the one who knows maybe how to help them in whatever situation that they're in. I mean, we take a similar approach too. That's why I really like that because I always try to figure out what is most important, you know, when I sit down and plan with somebody, because for some people, 
leaving a legacy, leaving money to children is really important for other people. That is not important. No two families are the same. So it's, I think it's so extremely, true. I mean, I never, <laughs> they're never the same. Mm-mm, mm-mm, never. <laughs> and they're fluid always- too, right? They're ch- they're fluid. I mean, they're, they change too yes. is the other part, which is why it's so important to continue communicating even once you have a plan. Right, exactly. You have to, how often do you say uh, someone should take a look at everything that they've got? I always recommend three to five years. I don't know if you have, do you have a different timeline, you know, for people when you uh, talk to them about updating their insurance plans? Great question. I think anytime there's a life event. So when I say life event, the things that I mentioned earlier, but also just anything that's that's different going on in your life, a move, a change, change in family status, change in children, marriage, divorce, any of those times, a child going to college, all those things can make child starting to drive can make a difference. So it never hurts to contact your, your insurance person and say, hey, this is going on. Is there something I can do about that? The advantage in having an agent versus going directly to a company too, is you can say, what if scenarios, kind of like you do with a lawyer. Right. You know, yeah. what if, what if we do this? What if we buy this house? Are we going to have challenges getting insurance in the state of Florida? What if we uh, put our child on this car? Will, will it cause some increases in premium? And you can, you can walk through this. What if we think we might file a claim, but we're not sure we want to, because you don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, but it could really make a difference on, on your insurability or some impacts there. So I think having that what if conversation, life events are a great time. And then I always just tell people on your birthday every year, yeah, you know, just contact, whether it's over phone, email, text, face to face, and just say, hey, anything new going on? Because there's always new discounts, there's changes in the industry. And I can say every year I could probably give someone something different or new to add. And if not, we just check in and make sure things are going good. But I, I, I use your birthday as kind of a guideline. Oh, that's a good guideline. Yeah, I like that a lot. When someone's looking for an agent, I mean, you know, this is a, a subject I, I'm becoming increasingly passionate about as technology is changing. You know, for my industry, there's a lot of people that are really afraid of AI and really afraid of lawyers being phased out because of the technology advances that are being made. But, you know, what we're seeing really is you know, the contracts that are being created by AI are, you know, wildly deficient and creating so many problems. And one other big issue that I see quite often is the people that go on these big platforms and do their own, I don't want to name any names, but the big websites that do the done for you um, estate plans with wills and things like that. I mean, inevitably come back to me and say, okay, I did this, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know if this has everything I need and it never has everything that they need. So I think we were talking a little bit before about the challenges. Um, having an agent to actually talk to is is so wonderful because, you know, I had this issue come up in my own life last year when my husband got into a car accident and it was a rather serious accident on 95. And there was a truck. It was one of those um, logging trucks that had completely stopped in the slow lane. And it caused this huge, you know, pileup of cars. And he unfortunately was in the middle of that. And the driver that was um, indicated at fault throughout the whole thing only had, I think $5,000 of property damage coverage. And, you know, I thought, you know, and, and I'm an attorney. So the first thing I'm thinking is <laughs> how can, you know, how can this happen? You know, how, how can she only have $5,000 of damage? And we all have to have all of these uninsured motorist coverage and, and all of these things. So luckily for us, we have very good coverage. And I always recommend to clients, like we take a look at, I, I, I don't look at their policies or anything like that, but I also, you know, encourage them that that's a really big part of asset protection is insurance coverage. I encourage them to have a good agent and to have, you know, adequate coverage on that. And luckily we did, and it ended up covering what we needed it to cover, but we mm-hmm. How does that happen? Can you can you shed some light on that, um, Edie? <laughs> yeah. First of all, your husband's okay, right? He was he fine. is okay. Luckily, Thankfully. he didn't have any injuries, so oh, yeah. he got extremely lucky on that. It was just property; oh, his truck was totaled. Oh gosh, yeah. And that scare and the stress, you know. But I love the, how you 
entered that conversation with the tools that are out there that are available today. And I think they're wonderful tools because we can, I go first a lot of times to what's available online and look at things and get some educate. Yeah, it's a great tool. But I think just like anything, I actually had this conversation with someone on a a medical procedure over the weekend with, with, they were, they were bringing something up that was done. And I said, you know, that's why I always use the phrase, anything, medicine, insurance, law, teaching, it's just almost as much of a, as art as it is a science. Mm -hmm. And you can find all the black and white answers. You can go, you know, you use whatever tools, but there's still interpretation, understanding, and then your take on what you need and, and your specifics that no one knows unless you talk about it. Right. And, and we try to, you, we try to put everything in these, you know, just boxes that they, they don't fit. They're usually concentric circles that touch over. So like you talk a lot about insurance I talk a lot about things that cross into the world of legal. I don't give legal advice. I'll say, you need to talk to an attorney about that. Same thing with uh, accounting. And, and that's where as a team, people can work together and have this whole, you know, resource of people to help them. And I, I think that's excellent what you're doing with customers to be able to do that because as your life changes, your needs change, your exposures change. Insurance is a big part of that. So let's go back to that car accident. I can't control all the other people around me on the road. Right. In fact, when I'm in the car with my husband and he's trying to do that, that's always a big argument for us. <laughs> he's trying to teach everybody lessons and I'm like, no, it's not worth it. We got good insurance. Let's just keep on, you know? I know. Um, so anyway, you can't control accidents will happen. Things will happen. We're humans. We make mistakes and um, can't be predicted all the time. So, so in that case, and, and, what insurance is designed to do is put people back to whole. Right. That's a real, you know, and that's a real, a car you can kind of do that, but a lot of other things you can't really ever define what that means. But in terms of exposures, and what, yeah. And in terms of exposures and liabilities, which is, is, is really what we were talking about with this accident is there are state minimum requirements and to get a tag on your car, Those are the minimum requirements, okay? Nothing is going to force anybody else to have any different amounts unless they take a look at themselves or uh, maybe an employer might require it. Otherwise, um, they're going to come up with those numbers. And what I needed when I was, you know, maybe right first on my own versus what I need as I have an increase in income and exposures really, really changes. Absolutely. So yeah, it really changes. So we look at and, we, and with what has evolved in insurance and, and lawsuits and propensity to suit and put people back to even more than maybe where they started sometimes is, is we look at it as lawsuit protection. So what is it that I need to protect myself against if I might accidentally be in something that causes someone harm? And then what might I need if the world around me doesn't have what they need to <laughs> me in harm? You know, and then you, you kind of put together the perfect profile, if you will. And then the customer decides, oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. And I call it strategy. Just how can you best strategize to make that work? It's so, really about risk tolerance, yeah. is it not? I mean, I talk yeah. a lot about that when we, when I work with people on more on the asset protection side, it's well, I don't know what works for you, especially with in the real estate industry, let's say. I always tell people, well, look at the amount of equity that you have. I mean, maybe it's not how many properties you have. Maybe it's the equity exposure that you have. And we look at it from maybe a different lens. I always talk to them about what their risk tolerance is because mine may be higher, maybe lower than yours. You know, I don't know what yours is. But once they kind of look through that lens, then it usually we we usually get somewhere with that. Also, I want to say too, you know, on on some of that stuff, like you really just get what you pay for, right? I mean, <laughs> you get what you pay for. You do, you do. And I think that's that's a great, you know, and what you're paying for with insurance companies are really their attorneys to represent you, their legal team, their claims force to represent you. Yeah. And when you have the coverage that you need, and that need is really based on your exposures. So whatever those exposures are, what I what someone can, you know, come against you for, right. then if I have those, if I have that covered, so I've just moved the move the coverage from myself to an insurance policy, then we can, you know, you've hired us to take care of you. And as long as we're going to, we're going to take care of you up to that coverage. 
And so yeah. as long as my coverage matches what I need, then theoretically I should be in good shape. And I mean, I can, I can tell you my own situation, a story where I was in a car accident in once and I turned oh legally turned right on red. And I, as another car was coming through and no one was injured, no ambulance, no fire truck, but I was more at fault than the other person. Mm -hmm. You know, so both cars were damaged. Both cars drove away from the scene. We didn't even have tow trucks. Yeah. And yeah. And so the cop showed up was other person was really nice. We all exchanged information. The cop said, you know, it was a little bit joint, but you were more at fault than that other person. So I'm going to give you a ticket, but you know, you know how to go to, you know, read the ticket. If you want to go to court, you can. So I did. And it was, re I paid the ticket and the points were dismissed. All good. My car was fixed. My insurance company paid for their car to be fixed. And then eight months later, I was sued for my policy limits, which were were, were very high limits because that's what I need to carry based on what I need. Oh, and okay. um, yeah, yeah, very hard. And, and even went into my umbrella and we can talk more about that if you have an interest in, in talking about that. But Absolutely. don't think it was right. I didn't think I should have been sued. But what I do know was it was it was taken care of under my insurance coverage. I never had to worry. I never had to lose sleep at night if I was going to have my wages garnished or if I was going to have to, you know, liquidate something. It was taken care of with the insurance. And um, that's when I think it really, really came down to me. I'd been an agent four years and, and I really felt I had the coverage that I needed. I was so grateful. We talk to people a lot about that. As their life events change and where they are, what do you need now at this time? Because you might need more, you might need less. Um, but let's just make sure you have have what you need. Yeah. Yes, so I've been there. That's scary. It yeah, is. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, you know, that's it. our our businesses are really similar because we're trying to give people peace of mind and and allow them to be able to sleep at night. And it's all about planning for the what ifs. Is this likely to happen? Maybe not, but it could happen. And if it does happen, it's devastating. So the, you have to kind of run through all of those scenarios and Every family is different and getting a lawsuit is a really scary thing. And I always try to remind people that if you are in a lawsuit, you really no longer have a lot of privacy. And if you get a judgment against you, you have zero privacy against, you know, what your assets are. You have to disclose everything and then they have to pick it apart and say, okay, how are we going to collect on this judgment from you? Insurance is a huge part of asset protection and, and how we can hedge our bets against the unfortunate happening because we can't control everything. Like, like you were saying, we can't control what that person's coverage is going to be. We can't control whether or not they're going to hire a lawyer, whether or not they have some kind of pre-existing medical condition, right? So we just don't know. I love that you mentioned umbrella insurance because I have a neighbor, an old neighbor that had a party at her house and she had good homeowners insurance coverage. I'm not going to quote the exact amounts because I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think it was somewhere in the range of like 300 to 500,000. It was, she had a party and the balcony collapsed. Part of the balcony collapsed during the party and some people were injured. And one person in particular had fairly bad injuries, nothing life-threatening, but just something that was persistently causing pain. And so she was sued and the amount for more than her homeowner's insurance, she became a walking advertisement for umbrella <laughs> insurance because she's like, had I known that this even existed, then I could have had this policy that would have covered another you know, 900 or a million dollars if something like this were to happen in my life. And I didn't know only so much was covered. And then I personally, they came after me personally for the rest of it. So it was quite a situation for her. She ended up having to settle and go through all kinds of things. So can we talk a little bit about what umbrella insurance is? I always recommend it to clients, especially, you know, people that have I wouldn't say like high risk behavior, but I have some clients that like to throw a lot of parties at their house <laughs> yes. and I can't help yes. but think of this story. And I'm always like, well, let's talk about this. Do you have an umbrella policy? What if your balcony collapses? What if something happens? What if you're in the real estate industry? You may have rentals, you may have 
Airbnbs, you know, there's just all kinds of scenarios where liability, extra liability that you may not be thinking of comes up in your life. So how does an umbrella policy work? That's so true. And the story you told, unfortunately, is is pretty common. And the kind of calls I get Saturday mornings a lot of times, like, hey, let's just yeah. maybe this happened. And again, I always encourage people too to call their their insurance agent to talk through possible scenarios or what if strategy is really, really important at that point in terms of how you might want to approach a situation. Again, it comes back to what you already brought up, which is visit with your insurance person, your representative because it's as personal as what you have to protect. Mm -hmm. And in the state of Florida, what is creditor protected, what someone can get in terms of like the, the person's home you mentioned, you know, what can they get from, from the, she didn't mean to hurt anybody. They didn't know that was going to happen. Exactly. And so liability on the homeowners is what you're talking about there. And believe it or not, liability on the homeowners is a teeny tiny part of the cost of the policy. It's just a teeny tiny part of it. So if I can meet with someone and break down their homeowners insurance and show them how it works, you would think that big number of 100,000, 300,000, that sounds really big, is, and that's really not the biggest part of the policy by any means. So you can buy, you know, you can do things with it that you probably didn't even really understand because you're mostly thinking about protecting your home at that point. So I encourage people to meet with their insurance company, go over what, what they need to protect, and then what are the tools to do that. And the umbrella, what I love about it is I just always kind of, when I talk to a customer, whether I'm on the phone or face-to-face, -face, I hold my arms up like an umbrella and I'm like, it's like that. It's an umbrella that goes over your household. So everybody in it and Think of all the kinds of different things that could happen with a home and auto, toys, RVs, and, and boats, and well beyond that. Properties, maybe I have, like you mentioned, a few Airbnbs, second homes, rental properties. And even though I may have all that stuff, how it's structured may or may determine whether I need an umbrella and how much coverage. And, and that's where it's great to work with an attorney like you, because there can be structures that can take care of some of that legal structures, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But if, yeah. But if I don't know that and the customer doesn't know that and you don't know that, then, but we can, we can approach it in ways that benefit the customer the most. Um, and again, I, I call an umbrella just lawsuit protection. So it's a, it's a way to, to be able to move, to have that lawsuit protection done by the insurance company. And I think this is really interesting. One of just reading this recently, the most common liability claim for homeowners are dog bites. Oh, dog bites. Really? And so just look in your neighborhood or your own home. How many people do you know have a dog? There are more dogs in people's homes than there are children oh my in gosh. people's homes. Yeah. And so, and dogs are sweet and dogs are wonderful and lovely but they're, until they you know, are. There's, <laughs> until they are, and they're still not predict, not predictable. So we have a case right now, and I, I've had many, many, many dog dog bite cases, yeah. and so that's really scary when your next door neighbor, you know, your your friends with your next door neighbor, and their child runs out, and something happens with your dog, and there's a situation, and there's medical costs. It's scary. It's you know, it's how, what do I do? And that's where that that protection can come in and take care take care of people. And sometimes it's, again, it's just making sure that there may not even be any claim there, but it's just making sure that you don't have to worry about hiring the resources to address that, you turn it over to the, you know, insurance company to, exactly. uh, to address that. Yeah. And that's yep. huge. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, if you don't have it, then you're out there trying to find a lawyer, right? Yeah. I mean, and yeah. then trying to figure out that process and paying lawyer fees, which I mean, you're going to have to come up with a retainer and that's not going to be very cheap. That's a huge benefit of just that alone of not having to find an attorney to represent mm -hmm. you because I can tell you when people come to me for things like a dog bite or any kind of smaller case like that, I have a hard time finding attorneys that I know that would take something like that. It's really difficult. Most lawyers don't that I know don't really that kind of thing. So that's where having that benefit alone is amazing because having to find your own attorney for any type of little thing like that can be difficult. Trust me. And I, I mean, and I know I'm in the industry and I still have a hard time finding <laughs> recommendations yeah. for people sometimes, but yeah, uh, yeah. But so one of the things you kind of mentioned 
is like looking at everyone's life as a whole. And one of the ways I approach planning with people is I look at the different sort of pillars, I would say, and I look at their legal, their insurance, their financial, and their tax. And that's kind of, those are like, you know, sort sort of the four, you know, um, areas of life that we address. I don't give them advice on all of those things necessarily, but I always tell people those are the four areas that you really need to pay attention to, to make sure you have a comprehensive view and plan for your life and for protection for your family and for yourself and, and perhaps for your business as well, if you're a business owner. It sounds like that's kind of what you do too, is you look at, okay, you know, the different types of insurance that, you know, a comprehensive plan for a client of yours would be, you know, obviously if they're a homeowner, we would have um, a homeowner's policy auto. I always recommend too, and I don't know you, I don't know if you would do this as well, but just, you know, a lot of times when there's a married couple, I like to tell people to own their cars separately because if you jointly own a car, there's two people to sue. <laughs> so mm. you, know, you own your car, let him or he or she own their car and keep those separate. And a lot of people do that already, but a lot of people don't. So that's just one little kind of tip that I tell people as well. And then, you know, obviously life insurance comes up a lot with my planning and the umbrella policy, like we talked about. Is that what you would say a comprehensive, you know, plan looks like for the average family? Absolutely. And just think of the risks of life. Yes. And that's what we really address the risks of life. So I always say manage the risks of life. How can we, how can we approach those with a strategy? And that's exactly what you just nailed is what are the risks of life? And then I can, I can get those all wrapped up and then I can go on about living my life and then. You know, and then if something changes, the things that we talked about, something changes, then I look at it again. But I love that you're doing that with the pillars. And I think one thing too is people are, I'll go back to my my passion for why I got into this. I was with the company 15 years in the industry, but not on the this side of it. And I, I just wish that I would have known things that I didn't know when I was younger. And I think we all do as we gain wisdom, but, but these are things that, any age, any person, you can start becoming a part of, of using these tools. And I just really think about how I can, how we can help people use resources that don't necessarily always mean a lot of money either. And that's what you're saying when you're looking at some of these pillars are, we can address some of these things in ways that solve them, or at least make you aware of them. And then you can decide what works for you, but it doesn't all necessarily equate to to spending money. A lot of times, a lot of times it's about how to, what you just did said about the car, how can I put things together in a way that is legal and, and, yeah. and addresses the, 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 the scenario. So we got onto this because you asked me a question of, of how we, how we are, we're both in, uh, approaching. And I think that's, that's what I really want to emphasize is that it can be it can be a strategy where multiple things work together, but it doesn't really have to be scary and big yeah. and, and, and always and expensive. And for me, I think I would have not talked to anybody about a lot of these things until I was in the industry. Cause in my mind, I would have heard, Oh, that's going to cost money. That's going to cost money. That's going to cost money or something. I don't know. And it was just the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when you ask about one thing you mentioned was life insurance, you want to talk a little bit about that where we, I'd love to, because this comes okay. up almost in every plan that I have. <laughs> okay. Okay. We good. Good, life good, insurance good. A lot. And that's why, so, you know, things like auto and home insurance, there, there are certain coverages that are required by law and or required by, if you have financing, you have to provide them. Yes. Very few things require, I don't, you know, by law, if you do, but require something like, like life insurance. And that's one thing I really think there's so many myths about it that can be addressed that could help people if they understand more. And it's kind of a scary topic again. It kind of is. most yeah, most people associate it with what? Death. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, yeah. with death. That's, and that is a, that's every meeting that I have, Edie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> this is, let's talk about what happens during your life. And then let's yeah. talk about what happens after death. And, and I that's try right. to keep it as light as I can. But yeah, mm-hmm. life insurance is definitely one of those things, right? It's it, it's great for other people, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always tell people, yeah. when's the best time? To, when is the best time to, to buy it? the day you know you're going to die, you know, or the day before, <laughs> the day before we always tell people. So, you know, that's the other right. thing. It's, it, you know, just if you've not had anything personally where you've gone through with and without it, if you have an experience kind of like the car accidents we were talking about, it's just all up there, you know, doesn't really mean anything and kind of sounds like a lot of money and kind of not fun. Um, well, so, you know, can I just mention, I do, I, I have a friend who unexpectedly passed away at 40 leaving his wife and three kids and without life insurance. And it has been a struggle for them because he was the breadwinner as well. She has three girls just like me and it breaks my heart. And luckily there's a big group of us that get together and do a charity golf event for her every year and raise money for her because she was left with nothing. She had the house and the mortgage and all the bills to continue to pay. And it was a nightmare. It's, it's a nightmare for her. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the scenario. And we see both, you know, we see some like that and some that aren't. So I think that to address that, because I'm sure that's not how he intended to leave her at all. And, and you, but to address that, I think some of the misconceptions about life insurance and they don't all have to be about death either. There's some wonderful living benefits to life insurance. But when I just try to talk conceptually with people is one, I want me, I want to make sure people know it can be affordable. It can be very affordable. And there's lots of different versions of what it looks like. So there, there are some very affordable ones. Um, and, and the sooner that you take a look at it, the younger you are, the more affordable it is. And that's okay. why it's important to think about it before you are in that scenario where you you have to get it or really need it because of like, take let's just take your friend married with three kids. You know, it's pretty obvious why someone might want it for then. But I usually don't, ha- I don't really, you know, didn't have that happen until later in life, let's say. And I didn't think about it when I was younger. So that's where my passion comes from. I'm like, I wish... I wish I would have known earlier so I could have at least made an educated decision on do I want it or don't I want it? And and when you're young, the younger you are, the more affordable it is. Health can be a part of that too and understanding, you know, your qualifications for it. But again, there are so many factors that go in that and so many different types available that I just really want to demystify the, let's just talk about it and let's just see what's out there and be comfortable about it. You don't you don't have to, just because you're talking about it doesn't mean you're committing yourself to anything. You're just, you're going out to look at it, just like you would exactly. go out to look at a car or a house. I think or, people get a little yeah. superstitious about planning, you yes. know, estate planning and life insurance. They think if they do it, something yeah. bad is going to happen. And I'm like, well, no, I think it's the opposite. You feel like, you know, you're all buttoned up. Like everything feels That's really right. good <laughs> because you right. you planned. But can I ask you a weird question? Yeah. So when you, and you may or may not want to answer this, <laughs> but, I'll, um, I'll avoid, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> right. When I remember when we got our life insurance and I think right after I had my first child and we did the physical kind and they give you your results and you look at everything and you're like, Oh, great. Do they as a company, do they predict your mortality? Because I've heard that these can be incredibly accurate. And I mean, obviously they don't tell you, but do they do it on their end is my question. What they actuaries do is they literally think of it like anything else that is predictable based on all the factors that go. It's it's a statistics game is what it is. And I mentioned to you in college, I was studying study. I love statistics and numbers and yeah. that's really what it is. So it's not you, your name at all, <laughs> but it definitely is. It definitely is you, all the factors that go into it, which are hundreds of factors, oh, I hundreds of factors. Yeah. yeah. And then, and it's a, it's a curve and some people fall here and some people fall here and some people fall here. And I always say, if you outlive that or beat the, be, beat the predictability, that's awesome. Like my number is 113. That is my number. I have built my life based on me living to 113. I love that's where that my goals number. are. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I picked that because I needed to give my younger kids as much time as my older kids. So I want them to all get through kind of some major stages of life. We know it won't be that pretty and I'll work that way, but that's my dream. That's what I've laid out. And I hope that I can, um, I'm the one that makes all the statistics mad because I beat them. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. But you know, and it's, I, I think too, the something about it is it's really insurance, life insurance. It's way easier than people think. I had one customer, there, there's types you don't even have to have physicals for. There's types you don't even have to have lab work for. I have one customer who just was doing something that did require lab work and we went to his home and, and by the way, insurance companies pay for all that. So you get a physical for free if you yeah. do your life insurance. Yeah. Was yeah. Great. And yeah, this is a, a, a dad who didn't typically get his health his physical every year and he didn't want to even have it done. They went to his house, which is very normal if that's what you wanted to do and put cartoons on, put it on the couch, put him so at ease. And and his wife was just grateful because he also had a physical that year. You know, they yeah. knew his cholesterol, his blood pressure and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, that's you know, good. it's just, it, it's usually a lot easier than people think and not as complicated, just like anything, you know, right. it's just not as complicated. Yeah. And, and there's, I go back again to the younger you are, if you lock it in and I'll tell a quick little story here. If you lock it in, then you, you've created a bucket, a tool it's kind of like building a house without furnishing it yet. Mm -hmm. You can buy the biggest house you want to buy. You know, you're stretching yourself, but you're always going to have that big house that you can fill and redecorate and make it your own. If you build the small house and you wish you had a big one, you usually have to cost more to build it the second time, right? Child number three, I call them by numbers because I have so many, many kids, but child number three. <laughs> um, at age 16, we have lucky, we're blessed with very good health, but at age 16, she had some stuff going on and we go to the pediatrician, which was kind of unusual for a 16 year old, go to a pediatrician and, and was diagnosed right then there with type one diabetes, oh, which, wow. and it's a life changing disease. And unless there's a cure for it, she's going to have it, you know, the rest of her life. And she's a very high functioning, great. She's now 26 and PA school. She's going to be a physician's assistant. Oh, that's um, great. She's doing great. But I remember after we went right to the hospital, got admitted, started needles and vials and insulin and talk about math and calculations and numbers and all these unknowns oh, that were just imagine. really scary, yes. really, really scary to me. And that was a, with someone who was old enough to do it herself too, a, thir a 16 year old, you know, so, so she was a good resource too and learned faster even than me. But after 24 hours of all that, I looked at her and said, you're so lucky your mom's an insurance nerd. And she goes, <laughs> why? And I said, because you already have life insurance locked in. And, and we, we, we didn't buy it on you for the thing we don't want to think about. We bought it in to lock in your health because you never know what's going to happen in your health. Oh, wow. Very healthy young lady, very healthy young lady who, you know, has something in her genetic makeup that finally presented itself at age 16. And if she wants to go own her own business someday or have her own, you know, be a mom, be whatever, she's already got some tools, some buckets in place that she wouldn't be able to do had she not, you know, had me in her life. And I hope that that's what we do for clients, no matter what age they come into our lives that we can, like you do too, help make a difference in things that they just didn't know about. And why would they? That's not what they do for a living. That's not their special specialty. That's, you know, what we do, what well, you absolutely. do. Absolutely. And, and, and I think that, yeah. that's such a great story because, you know, that really emphasizes, you know, working with people. I mean, it, you know, it's something that I find myself more and more, maybe as I get older or just maybe as technology changes and, and things are going, you know, to where people are more isolated and it's, it's, you know, there's so much access to information. There's so much access to other things that, you know, it's great. A lot of my clients say it's wonderful to just be able to know that you're going to be there for my wife. If something happens to mm. me. Mm -hmm. They know who to call and you're a person that we can, you know, depend on and, and rely on. So I really, you know, I, it sounds like that's what you're giving to your clients. And that's very, that's so needed. And it's something that I think as a society, we pulled away from, but I'm hoping that we're going to get back to it and really valuing people. So, um, so I want to thank you so much for being on today. I think this was really, really educational and helpful. Um, and I hope that everyone out there got a, 
a lot out of this. So Edie, if someone is interested in working with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, there's all the different ways. They can call me at 904-425-4054. Uh, they could probably should start with my website because that's got everything. Yeah. And that's www.edwilliams.com. And Edie spelled E-D-I-E. So you can look up State Farm, look up agents in my area. But if you want to find me specifically, Edie Williams, and it's called E-D-I-E Williams, that'd be the best way to get a hold of me. And we are available 24-7. If you don't get us, you get a State Farm employee who gets the message to us to make sure that we can help you any way we can. And, and we'd love to love to do that. And I really appreciate being on the show today. Yeah, this a lot of fun great. chatting with you. Yeah, a lot of fun. Nice to chat with you too. And we'll also um, put links to you um, on our website on elderlawhour.com. So if you want to shoot over there to learn more about the show today, you can do that and learn more about Edie. Thank you again so much for being here. And I really, really appreciate it. I think it was so interesting to learn more about insurance and I can't wait to see what we'll have to talk about next. Hopefully when you agree to be on the show next time. <laughs> oh, thank you, Emily. It was great. I appreciate All right. it. Thank you so much. To wrap up the show today, I have a question here from Lynn. She is a widow. Her husband died and the property that they were living in as their homestead was never actually titled in her name. So she's inherited essentially a life estate into in the property that she has resided in for the past several years. Her problem is that the children are that are going to inherit the property who are called the remainder men in this instance are putting pressure on her to make repairs. And she needs to know what her obligations are. These are children from a previous marriage that are now putting pressure on her to make certain repairs on the property. In this instance, the husband owned the property previously, and then he remarries and he never retitles the property into the name of husband and wife, which creates a different type of title called tenancy by the entirety. So that never occurred. So when the husband died, the Florida constitution steps in and protects her from not having a home and says, okay, it automatically creates a life estate into that property. A life estate is essentially an interest in real property that starts, that continues until the death of the individual. Then there's a remainder interest and the remainder interest are those who are ultimately going to inherit the property. In this case, it sounds like it's his children from the previous marriage. The obligations for a life tenant are to maintain the property. You have a duty to the remainder men, okay? You can't destroy the property. You can't go in and do, you know, whatever you want. You have to prevent waste. You can't destroy, misuse or neglect the property. Anything that's going to diminish the value of it is going to create a cause of action against you, which means that that's going to give the remainder men who are the children that are ultimately going to inherit the property, that's going to give them a lawsuit potentially against you for not preserving the property. So you are going to have to make ordinary repairs, but the good news is for you, you don't have to make extraordinary repairs. You're going to have to make sure that you keep paying the property taxes. You're not obligated actually to carry insurance for the remainder men's benefit, but you are obligated to, to make sure that property taxes are paid every year and that you are preserving their right to inherit the property and also that you're not diminishing the value of the property. So yes, you do have some duties here. You do have um, the obligation to um, preserve that for the next generation, um, but you don't have the, the obligation to do anything extraordinary with the property. So in some, you do have an obligation to them. You do have to make repairs to the property and you have to keep it so that you've maintained the value of it. You're not diminishing the value for them or they will have a cause of action against you. So I hope that this is helpful for you. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much for listening today. 
I really enjoy talking to Edie about insurance. I think I learned a lot about how to approach looking at insurance in a comprehensive way and what all I actually might need for myself, but certainly to recommend to clients and to you all about how to make sure you're properly insured and taking care of your family. So as always, we're going to have great resources for you at elderlawhour.com where you can connect with Edie and also get some more information about today's um, episode and other episodes. We are on Saturdays at 1 p.m. here on WBOB. Thanks again for listening and we will see you next week.